Now that we've seen how to connect Pro Tools to the Dolby Atmos renderer and also map our buses to the respective output and object, let's go ahead and see how we can create object tracks in Pro Tools. Before you start, make sure you have the Objects view visible in the Edit window or the Mix window. You can enable it by selecting Objects in the drop-down menu. This will help you easily assign an object output on a track. Let's start by making an audio track that will have our audio clips for the mix. This can be a mono or a stereo audio track. The one thing to keep in mind is if you plan on a stereo object track, make sure that the object is assigned via the subpath to the respective object input. This is because the Dolby renderer doesn't see an object input as stereo. Clicking the object output button on the track will show you the various object outputs that are available. The ones in yellow are used and the ones in white are available. Choose the appropriate one for your track. Clicking on the Bus Object button in the Object section will toggle the output between the bus and the object. Pro Tools pan information will seamlessly switch between the bed or an object output, keeping the automation intact. This toggle can be automated. Now, let's look at this in a session and see how we can organize and manage objects and beds. The first step is to import all your audio into your session and have it color-coded in names so that you have a clean session. If you are using an existing session to mix, you can skip this step and go ahead. To make things simple, let's have this mix with one bed and the rest as objects. A good starting point is to set all of the outputs of the tracks to the bed output. This way, when you hit play, you'll be able to hear the audio through the renderer. The next step is choosing your objects. A good rule of thumb in organizing this is to make sure you have certain groups of objects for certain tracks. For example, you can have objects 1 through 10 for percussion, 11 and 12 for bass, etc. as you see fit. This lets the final output be organized as well. There are two ways you can set up for objects in Pro Tools. Let's look at each one. The first method is by assigning the object output directly in Pro Tools as we saw before. This allows for seamless toggle between a bed and an object within Pro Tools itself. The second method is by inserting the Dolby Atmos Music Panner plugin in the track. There are three main steps to this. First, insert the Dolby Atmos Music Panner on the track and make sure it is connected to the renderer. This part needs to be done only once. The second step is to make sure you set the output pair output and make a note of this. The reason for this is step three. Set the object output on the audio track to the same as you have set in the object pair. So for example, if the object pair is 11 and 12, set the object output to 11 and 12 as well and disable the object control mode in the panner. This way, the renderer will see the panning metadata from the music panner. The music panner allows for sequence panning. This will allow us to have predefined pan positions that can change in the sequence based on the tempo as well. If you intend to master using the Dolby Atmos renderer, a good idea is to set up a timecode track in Pro Tools. To do this, create a mono aux track and set the output to the output selected for LTC in the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now, on this track, insert the Dolby LTC generator plugin. This will now provide timecode to the renderer and will allow for mastering and creating the final deliverable. Dolby now provides a Dolby Atmos binaural settings plugin that you can download. This plugin allows you to set up the various binaural rendered metadata, render grouping, and descriptions directly from Pro Tools without toggling to the renderer. This allows you to check and make changes on the fly if, for example, you want to check how an object would sound in the far binaural setting versus near. This plugin also streamlines a lot of work in terms of having to group any of your objects and beds, and by adding a description to what each input can be. There are a few things to keep in mind when working in Dolby Atmos. The first thing is to make sure that you have the same sample rate as you have set up in the renderer. The second one is to make sure the frame rate in Pro Tools and the Dolby Atmos renderer are the same. The next step is organizing. There are three main steps in this. Number one, creating VCA masters number two, creating object masters, and number three, grouping tracks into folders. For a mix where you would need to control tracks that are sent to different outputs, a good idea is to create VCA masters. Since we know that an audio track can be routed and toggled between a bed and an object output, we would create a VCA for each of our groups. Let's create a music VCA. Group all of the music tracks and the reverb aux into a mix group and assign it to the music VCA. When creating auxes for reverbs or delays, etc., those are considered in the same way that you would treat an audio track. You can assign them to a bed or an object if you need to toggle between them. 
Only mono or stereo auxes can be sent to objects. Something to keep in mind is to have your LFE send as an aux send from each track rather than to use the LFE send in the panner. This is because the object output doesn't have an LFE. And so if you have an LFE sent on the panner and you toggle to an object, you lose the LFE. Now that our tracks are organized, you are ready to begin the mix and explore Dolby Atmos for music. Once the mix is done, you can choose to export your mix as an ADM file from Pro Tools that you can deliver for the streaming services.